Today we're going to be talking about how to find the radius of convergence of a series. And in this particular problem, we've been given the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of quantity negative 1 raised to the n power times n divided by 4 raised to the n power, all multiplied by quantity x plus 3 raised to the n. Now in order to find the radius of convergence of a series like this, what we're going to do is use the ratio test for convergence. And that's the most common way that we'll find radius of convergence of any series. What the ratio test tells us is that we're going to find some number L, which is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity or as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 all divided by a sub n. What it tells us is that if we find this value and we, we get some value equal to L, if L is less than one, then we know that the series converges on that interval. So all we have to do is find this value for L, set it less than one, and that's gonna tell us that the series converges. As long as we have L in a specific form, we can call this value over here on the right hand side, the radius of convergence. That'll be the radius of convergence like that. So let's start with finding this value for L using the ratio test for convergence. What we're going to do is deal with a sub n plus 1 and then with a sub n. Well, what we know is that our series representation here inside our infinite sum, that this is equal to a sub n. So we already have the value for a sub n and we're going to plug it in for a sub n right here we need the value for a sub n plus one. The way that we're gonna get it is by switching out all of the n values in this series for n plus one. So everywhere we see n, we're gonna put in n plus one instead. What that's gonna give us, we'll say L is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value here of a sub n plus one. So we'll plug in n plus one, we'll get negative one raised to the n plus one power times n plus 1 when we plug n plus 1 into this n right here times x plus 3 raised to the n plus 1 power and we're going to divide that all by 4 to the n plus 1. Now we're going to divide this whole thing by our original series a sub n so we're just going to write it in there exactly as it is negative 1 to the n times n times x plus 3 raised to the n all divided by 4 to the n like this. So this is going to be how we find the value for L. Now oftentimes we skip this step because we're usually going to end up with a fraction divided by another fraction like this. So when that's the case we can skip this division step here and instead of dividing this fraction by this other fraction we can multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Remember that all we have to do is flip this denominator upside down and then we can multiply it by the numerator instead of dividing by this fraction. So here's what that looks like. L is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. We'll keep our whole numerator, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 times x plus 3 to the n plus 1, all divided by 4 raised to the n plus 1 power. But then instead of dividing by this fraction, we'll multiply it by its reciprocal. So we'll flip it upside down and we'll put its denominator in the numerator and its numerator in the denominator. So negative 1 to the n times n times x plus 3 raised to the n like this. Once we have the limit in this form, we're going to be looking for terms in our numerators and denominators with like bases. So here's what we mean. We have in our numerator here negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 power. The base of that term is negative 1. In the denominator, we have negative 1 raised to the n power. The base of that is negative 1. So because we have like bases, we can simplify these two terms. We can combine these two terms. All we need to do is subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. So our exponent in the numerator is n plus 1. So we've got that there. Then we're going to subtract the exponent in the denominator, which is n. So we'll subtract to n. When we do that, you can see we'll get our n's to cancel, and we're just left with positive 1. Because we have this positive 1 left over, we know that our term is going to remain in the numerator. If we end up with a negative value right here, then we know that whatever's left over is going to be in the denominator. But this is our new exponent. 
So instead of negative 1 to the n plus 1 and negative 1 to the n, we're just going to end up with negative 1 to the first power, and that's in the numerator. Of course, negative 1 to the first power is just negative 1, so we're going to have that negative 1 value in the numerator, but because we're taking absolute value here, that negative 1 is just going to go away. We almost don't even have to write it in because those absolute value bars are going to get rid of it, so we don't even have to consider these. n plus 1 doesn't have anything to cancel with in the denominator, so that's going to stay. Here we have x plus 3 raised to the n plus 1 power, and then in the denominator we have the same base, x plus 3, but then raised to the n. So when we take again n plus 1 minus n, we're just left with a positive 1. So here we start writing this out, we're going to get l equals the limit as n approaches infinity, and what we're going to be left with here, we've got quantity n plus 1. For our x plus 3, we're going to be left with x plus 3 in the numerator like this, because what was left over was that positive 1. So we had that positive 1 exponent. It's in the numerator raised to the first power there. Then finally, we have 4 raised to the n and 4 raised to the n plus 1. Well, here, if we take the exponent in the numerator, n, and we subtract the exponent in the denominator, minus n plus 1, what we get is n minus n minus 1 when we distribute this negative sign across these two terms. The n's are going to cancel, and we're left with negative 1. That means that we're going to be left with 4 to the first power in the denominator. So we just have 4 in the denominator, and of course then we have this n value in the denominator that doesn't cancel with anything. At this point, because we have the limit as n goes to infinity, we only need to keep terms involving n inside of our absolute value bars here and inside of our limit. Terms involving x can be pulled out in front because they're not going to be affected by the limit as n approaches infinity. But we do need to make sure that we keep the absolute value bars on any value we pull out. So we're going to say l is equal to the absolute value of x plus 3 times the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1 divided by 4n. Now if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of this rational function here, what we know is that the limit is going to simplify to 1 fourth, and we know that because we can just look at the coefficients here on the highest degree n terms. We have 1 here, we've got 4 in our denominator, so our limit there is going to be 1 fourth. Therefore, we say L is equal to 1 fourth times the absolute value of x plus 3. That's our value for L. Now remember before, we said that once we got a value for L, we would set that less than 1, and that would help us find our radius of convergence. So we're going to set this less than 1, and now we're on our way to finding the radius of convergence. What we need to make sure we do is only leave a particular value on the left-hand side over here the left-hand side being everything to the left of the inequality. We can only have on the left-hand side here some value of x minus a. And it can be in absolute value bars if we want, that's fine in terms of finding the radius of convergence, but we can only have x minus a over here. We've got that in terms of x plus 3. We have x minus a negative 3 where a is a constant, in this case negative 3, but we also have this 1 fourth value. We have to get rid of that in order to find the radius of convergence. So what we do is multiply both sides of the inequality by 4 so that we're left with absolute value of x plus 3 less than 4. Now we have an acceptable value on this left-hand side. You can have x plus or minus some constant. Remember that this constant can be 0 as well. So if you're only left with this value here of x or the absolute value of x, that's okay too. If it's x squared or x cubed or anything like that, you need to take the root so that you're just left with x to the first power, first degree x term. But this x plus 3 is an acceptable form for the left-hand side. Once we've eliminated everything from the left-hand side of the inequality except this x minus a value here, we know that we have the radius of convergence over here on the right-hand side of the inequality. So our radius of convergence is equal to 4 based on this value over here on the right hand side. We just pull that directly, that's our radius of convergence.